Yes. So, what, what I, of course, want to thank uh, Representative Fishbein for coming out and doing this uh, presentation. I think it's very informative, um, not just to see all the statistics, which I think is, is, is really the key base to the entire presentation, but some of these proposals that we're talking about, um, there's, they're not just lock them up and throw away the key. That is not what this is about. There are many more steps along the way to try to help, um, help, help solve the problem through other means that is not just locking you know, these juveniles up, right? And we look at things that we can do. And as the chief just said, you know, I, I live in Monroe, right? I also represent portion of Newtown. And we have a Facebook group, a Monroe resident Facebook group that literally at 10 o'clock every night, there's a message that goes on there says, make sure you're out there, lock up your car. Make sure you take your valuables inside. Every night, someone does that. They have like a little, someone's on it every single night. And just a reminder that we can help solve some of these issues too by doing little things ourselves. So I appreciate the chief bringing that up because it, it, you know, take some ownership of it, report if there is issues, report it. Don't just let it go, report it because we all have to have this a little bit on our own to make sure we're trying to help get this solved. But a lot of these proposals, you know, well, they're not just locking up, throwing the kids in, in jail, right? It's trying to find ways to help solve the issue. That's also in the back of the mind, keeping the victims in mind, right? We lose sight of that a lot of times. There are victims a lot of times in there. It, not everyone's just, it's in the garage, it's, it's out in the driveway, and someone just stole, you know, a couple bucks out of there. No, there's times where kids, someone's pumping gas. We've seen video all over the news of this. People are pumping gas and someone comes in and takes the car, jumps in the car, kids in the back. That kind of stuff happens. And we need to make sure to keep the victims in mind too while we're doing this. By also trying to make sure we're correcting things for the children to make sure the juveniles are going to get back on the right path. And I think a lot of these proposals that uh, Representative Fishbein has presented gets us going in that right direction. So we are back, as, as Senator Wong said, we are back in, in, in two weeks. We're coming back. No more excuses about special session. No, we don't have to come back. No, we're there. We can get it done. Let's have those conversations and get this ball moving because um, that's what the residents want. I can tell you from me being in, in, in Monroe and Newtown, the, the number one thing I hear about is COVID. Yes. Something related directly to COVID. Yes. The second thing is this situation is the number two thing I hear about from residents that I'm talking on everyday single basis. So we see understand that, make sure we're acting on it. That's what we are elected to do. Represent the people, what they're trying to get fixed. So I look forward to getting up there February 9th. We have some things we have to accomplish and hopefully this is one of the things we can get done in this next session. Roadblocks that um, made it difficult for law enforcement when we encounter juveniles um, to try to get them adjudicated properly. Um, you know, the last thing, you know, we want to do is unnecessarily arrest a juvenile, but, you know, over the course of the last year, the stolen car problem, I think, is the most prevalent problem that we've been dealing with in the state of Connecticut. Um, and there was a couple um, roadblocks that were there that, you know, um, some of the recent legislation made it a little bit easier for us getting that information that we need to get to a judge. If there's an instance of a person that needs to be detained or a juvenile that needs to be detained. And I think you brought up some of the defined uh, intricacies there about you know, not getting uh, adjudicated in the GA where the offense occurred, that, that creates a substantial hardship, you know, for law enforcement. Um, you know, moving forward, you know, um, is it a problem? Yeah, it's a problem that we've been contending with in, in law enforcement. Um, car break-ins, car thefts. And as we saw over the course of the last year, some of them turned very, very violent. Um, I had the opportunity to send some information out um, prior to this meeting starting. Um, of a operation that we worked with um, in conjunction with Bridgeport PD. We were fortunate from the state to get some funding, um, Bridgeport being the hub, um, not unlike other municipalities that are larger, were the hubs in, in their area. And there was a number of departments that participated with um, Bridgeport. It was us, Westport, Fairfield, Newtown, Monroe, Trumbull, um, and Stratford. And we had three month window of financing um, to work on the stolen car problem. Uh, if you look at the, 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 the handout I gave out to, to Catherine, I know she distributed it. You know, some of the results that we saw were astounding as far as the number of vehicles that we recovered, the number of vehicles that were stolen, the number of arrests that we made. Um, you know, and, and the, the biggest benefit I think that we received in the three month period, it ceased on December 31st, was the intelligence that we gathered. Um, you know, where are these cars getting stolen from? Where are they going? What's the problem that's occurring when these cars are being stolen? And we're, you know, we're finding out that juveniles were stealing cars um, and then they were bringing them, you know, into larger municipalities, leaving them in Waterbury, Bridgeport, Danbury, uh, you know, New Haven. And then those cars were being used 
in the commission of other offenses by other individuals. So that was one of the biggest problems that we confronted. Um, you know, I'll, I'll talk about this operation that we did in Bridgeport. I think it was very successful. Three months, we recovered 123 stolen vehicles um, out of the 105 that were, that were reported in that area. Uh, we made 11 juvenile arrests from various um, you know, uh, offenses, being driving a stolen vehicle, being in possession of a weapon, committing some type of other crime. We made 63 adult arrests, which is a large number. We recovered 22 firearms, um, and in 12 of the incidents, um, we, we recovered narcotics, sizable amount of narcotics um, as of making arrests. Um, the one thing that I think is a telltale sign that is concerning to us as law enforcement was the fact that the vehicles that were being stolen were being used in the commission of another crime. So in this short window here, we saw that of the 20 vehicles of, of the ones that were recovered, 20 of them were used in the commission of a violent crime. Um, I'll give you the, the, our, our community, you know, in 2021, we had 16 motor vehicles stolen in Newtown. Um, not a big number in comparison to some of our, 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 our neighbors in Lower Fairfield County um, that saw a big uptick. But for us, it was concerning because it was an increase over the prior years. We had 49 vehicles that were entered. Um, you know, one of the things I, that I talked about on the, on the motor vehicle thefts, one of the vehicles that was stolen from uh, our town in Newtown was used in the um, attempted murder in Bridgeport, drive-by shooting. Um, so that was just out of a small representation of 16 cars stolen from there, Newtown. One of them was used in a violent crime. I don't know what, what happened. The rest of the, the other cars were all recovered. They might have been used in the commission of another crime. But, you know, historically, I think a long-term operation like this would, would gather more intelligence for us. And I think we saw a decrease countywide in, in our area of stolen cars decreasing when there was a, um, a knowledge that there was a task force that was looking at this problem, recovering vehicles immediately, making arrests, and, and kind of like curtailing the activity. So, you know, um, it, it is a problem, you know, and our concern in law enforcement always is not the theft of the car itself, right? I think everybody's pretty familiar with, you know, as police officers, we're not going to pursue that vehicle. We understand when juveniles get in the car, they're going to run from police. And what's what's the benefit of stopping a car or recovering that car if it's going to create a crash and, and hurt so that those individuals in that car or somebody in the public? Our concern is, you know, where are these vehicles going, all right? And what happens when they're, they're left in, in another area and somebody else picks them up and starts using them for the commission of another crime? Um, you know, I think, you know, the data, I know everybody would ask, hey, what's the data on the, the number of juveniles that are stealing cars? You know, looking at a three month period, you're not going to get any kind of data that's really, you know, this is data that's representative. It's good data, right? But you need to do something a little bit more sustained to say, hey, yeah, this is the problem and kind of identifying, you know, what exactly is the juvenile's, um, you know, issue in, in, in committing these crimes over here. I think, you know, you know, and, and the individuals that we have arrested, you know, um, juveniles, you know, I think juveniles are being enticed sometimes by older individuals to steal these cars and then bring them to be used by somebody else um, because they know that if a juvenile gets put in the system, nonviolent crime, you know, they're not going to suffer any type of uh, consequences. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that we look for in law enforcement is intelligence, right? You know, what's the trend? What can we do to prevent that trend from occurring further and providing for public safety? Um, so I think it, it's, it's an issue that, you know, needs to be looked at further. 